Hello guys, welcome to the channel, your actor coach. How's it going? Last month, my friend and I formed a small study group investigating the Kanban method. We downloaded some online materials, talk about its core practices, and tried to sketch the workflow in our teams so that we could analyze where the hidden issues are. He once complained about his team collaboration, why they were always breaking back and forth confirmation between the project manager and the teammates, even if they had held several planning meetings. And the software engineers asked the project manager what the spec was for some features, which seemed all to be clarified before initiatives. Even what they committed for each iteration was undone and accumulated. I just lightly asked, do you think your product backlogs are clear enough to reduce some of the conditions? He shrugged, because that was exactly the idea in his mind, but didn't know how to express. Well, it is writing a comprehensible product backlog that matters. However, most people just write it down but have no idea what kinds of attributes a product backlog should have to reflect sufficient information. In this video, I'm going to introduce four qualities that backlog should have that are abbreviated as DEEP, D-E-E-P. So let's take a deeper look at what the hell are this. What it means details approximately. I know you might have similar experience. When you are assigned a task, you cannot understand what the task is going to achieve or even it directs you to a wrong result if you do it without further consideration. In general, a detailed product backlog has some basic elements in it. For example, who to serve, action to take, and the result to achieve. If you'd like to go deeper, we could even talk about how to well structure your backlogs, but let's beyond today's topic. We focus on attributes now. Detailed product backlogs bring three pros. Firstly, it stimulates collaboration between the project manager and the team because they will help you clarify hidden issues and split backlogs into smaller tasks from various perspectives, making them more doable. Besides that, a detailed product backlog gets easier for your partners to refine defects if needed. Lastly, it enhances team focus on generating expected results instead of wasting time in frequent confirmation of requirements. Usually, we tend to group backlogs with the clarity. The clearer the backlogs are, the upper they are put, just as the graph I showed here. The second E means estimated. I guess some keywords like days or hours might pop up in your brain, but it's far from that. Estimation could refer to amount of work or time. Estimated product backlogs not only assist the team in value delivery capability to predict possible falling points, but also seek balance by selecting proper amount of backlogs for increments. However, I should alert one thing, human beings are pretty insensitive to time in the market, not to mention deadlines, as per my experience, it never succeeds. In my opinion, I prefer to use uh, story points or lead time to assess the delivery ability of an agile team. And the third E means emergent. Anything changes as time goes by, so do product backlogs. Remember, product backlogs reflect the latest customer needs and user feedback, whatever they are, defects, market research, business analysis, data processing, blah, blah, blah. And we need a mechanism to ensure backlogs are always up to date. Fortunately, in agile project management, we can update them in daily basis, weekly basis, or bi-weekly basis. Those are all dependent on how your team works. Usually, I prefer to take a 15 minutes daily review, leading teammates to propose their issues and resolve them immediately. Finally, the last P means prioritize. Ideally, our product backlogs need to prioritize whatever criteria they use. One of a product owner's responsibility is to maximize the delivery value for customers. And the prioritized ones should reflect this after discussion with teammates and stakeholders in the planning session. On top of that, prioritized backlogs make a team focus on the highest ones, which provide them a sense of direction knowing where to go. However, in most conditions, not all product backlogs are prioritized because your product owner might be too busy to regulate. I suggest you prepare sufficient prioritized backlogs for the upcoming two planning meetings and left others unorganized. But I still hope you could maintain their priorities as often as you can. There are many factors determining how a backlog is sorted, maybe immediate cash flow, retention rate, or even just pursue a short marketing effect. All of them are based on the results you want to realize. Well, the above four qualities are necessary if like product backlogs to be well structured. 
Although I only mentioned a little bit about some fundamental elements of a product backlog, I will give you a guide telling you how to prepare your own backlogs for a planning meeting. I hope this video could help you more clear about necessary attributes of a product backlog. Comment below if you have any question. Thumbs up and subscribe. I'm Andy, your Agile Coach. See you next time.